Okay. So we have the Shura light has been added at I think 11.128 kilos, just roughly. Um, I've added in approximately 60% by weight of water, which is uh, six and a half liters. And it's gone to a consistency very much like cake mix. It's pretty watery. I can actually take it up to 80% um, by weight. I don't, I don't think I want to. It's too watery to be honest already and I'm not even inside. This is all according to the data sheets that's stipulated by um, Shinka Wire, which uh, and they're the old BHP refractory supplier. So it's a very reliable product. If I can just show you there. Like, basically, it's like mud. And what's unique about this drill, which I thought I would never see, it's my uh, father in law's, his grandfather, his father, so my what would be Caroline's. Um, Caroline's grandfather, I believe, is that down here, it actually says, made in Australia. My God. So um, now, let's do the pour. Okay. This is now pretty clean. There's still like very small residue of oil, but um, not really anything to be concerned about. Um, this is why I picked these buckets, because you can turn them into spouts pretty easily. Gee, that was so much easier than I thought it would be. <laughs> um, the nature of uh, this solution is it is it's what's called thixotropic, which means that its viscosity changes with its movement or agitation. It's not exactly the definition of it, but that's effectively what it means. So as you vibrate it, it becomes thinner. Um, and I've seen that if you get a, a montmorillonite clay, for example, uh, it will be something that you can stand on. And then when you agitate it, it turns into something as a fluid as water. So, strictly speaking, it's a very non Newtonian fluid. Uh, it's cornstarch in water is very similar to that, actually. That's exotropic as well. And this is why you see on videos uh, people being able to walk on their white kind of solution. I'm not too concerned about this, although I will clean it off, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, the stand has been made level. No, I am not a bricky or a concreter. So therefore this will not turn out as beautifully as some people will think I should have done. Um, and if you want to criticise me for that, well, maybe I deserve it. All right, I'm gonna leave that now. And that will be the base. This base is resistant to 1250 degrees. And that sounds like, well, ridiculous considering I'm wanting to take it up to 1650, but you'd be surprised how the base doesn't heat up anywhere near enough. I'm also going to put on a small layer of the, uh, the much harder material just as a, as a interface um, to give it that hard resistance but you'd be surprised how the bottom can actually be two to three to four hundred degrees cooler than even this much above the flame definitely goes up um, and that's the nature of it so that's it let's see how that goes in a couple hours 
So next is the insulative wool, which is effectively like spun fiberglass. And uh, this stuff, while expensive at like 140 to four dollars for the roll, eight meters worth, is um, it's like fairy floss. Literally, it's the same consistency as fairy floss or uh, fibrous cotton wool. So it's resistant to, to 1200 and something degrees. Um, it's going to go in between the light refractor and the outside of the container, and very easy to install. And it's the last stage before we put in the the uh, main structure inside. So tune in for that next time.